Today on The Trader, computer game designer Bruce Balfour takes us to the stars in Outpost. It was fun blowing up the Earth, but we figured there were other things that you could do that would be just as interesting. Archivist Jim Lotta shows us the hottest book about Star Wars collectibles. This is the first edition, first one, hot off the press, and the fans are just going crazy for it. And composer Gerald Freed treats us to the sounds of Star Trek. All this and more on today's episode of the Sci-Fi Trader. author Eden Philpotts observed that the universe is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our wits to grow sharper. Hi, I'm Warren James, and on this episode of The Sci-Fi Trader, we're featuring wondrous music, fascinating books, and software that will sharpen your wits and hone your imagination. And they're all just a phone call away. You know, a few weeks ago, we on Earth were treated to the real spectacle of Comet Shoemaker-Levy blasting into Jupiter and creating plumes of fire thousands of miles high. That was Jupiter. What would happen if it crashed into the Earth? That's the question that Bruce Balfour asks in his new computer game, Outpost, a game that has taken computer graphics far above current standards. Okay, Bruce, you start the game by blowing up the Earth. Mm -hmm. Then what do you do? Well, it was, it was fun blowing up the Earth, but we figured there were other things that you could do that would be just as interesting. Um, and it was, I thought it was very handy of this comet to come along and, and push the game forward. And provide well. you with free publicity. That's yeah, you, right. you start with, with the Earth being destroyed by an asteroid, and then it's up to you as the game player to lead an expedition to another star system and start a colony there. That's right. It, it's really a, a, a game for con control freaks who want to uh, colonize space. Um, you pack your mothership when you get started, um, and in that time you uh, send out probes, get data back, then you go to the actual planet that you want to colonize. Uh, you send down a robotic seed factory ahead of the uh, uh, human lander, and uh, then you, that gets your colony started, and then you're into the simulation. You're actually building the colony. Great. That's, that's similar to things I've heard in other games, but this one is very different from other computer games. Mm -hmm. What makes it so special? Well, uh, it's dealing with space, and it's dealing with a much more hostile environment. Um, you can build, uh, you have to um, maintain the morale of your colonists, but whenever you make a mistake, people die, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little more serious than most simulations, you see. You know, Bruce, Outpost is filled with lots of wonderful animations. They're almost a reward when you do something. You see this fine little animation. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the dry dock animation. That was fabulous. Well, the dry dock scene is while the mothership is being built in Earth orbit, uh, you see a DCX type uh, craft moving through there at the same time, uh, and a fair amount of activity. It's, it's being built in orbit over a couple of years' time before you actually go on your journey. Yes, and then you have some fabulous scenes out by Jupiter where you, the ship gets refueled and sent on its way. That's right. They mine the atmosphere of Jupiter for hydrogen, and that's how the uh, uh, reactor on the ship is actually fueled. And then once you get to your planet, then you, you have the seed ships and the, the transports, the co colonial transports, the cargo ships. Those, those landing sequences are fabulous. Well, the, uh, uh, one of the things you do see is the seed factory going down and deploying the robots that actually get the colony started. Let me guess, you had so many robots in the, uh, in the game because your background is robotics and artificial intelligence. It's artificial intelligence, that's right. That, that's what I got my degree in, and I did work on that at uh, NASA when I was there. It's an amazing game because you can, you can play it for so long that you can actually rebuild a planetary civilization from scratch. That's right. And build new starships and go off exploring with them. Well, it being a dynamic simulation, you'll never play the same game twice exactly. Um, but that is an end point you can work toward, is building a new starship, building up your colony to the point where you can build a new space program once again. Thanks, Bruce. Outpost, it's more than a game. The legacy of Earth depends on your survival. Darla, better round up some viewers and get them into the outpost. No problem, Sheriff. I'll just post these reviews and they'll come running. 
Omni Magazine boldly proclaims that Outpost is absolutely the best science fiction software ever published. Electronic Game says Outpost is a visually stunning package. Computer Gaming World declares the graphic quality in Outpost is simply incredible. For $59.95, you can have this Windows CD-ROM program for your IBM PC or compatible, all by calling. Josh, you're the point man on this posse. Darling, I think you've been alone at the outpost a little too long. This game is based on current NASA research in planetary science, robotics, terraforming, and interstellar spacecraft design. It features state-of-the-art 3D computer graphics, and it's the best way to live out a space exploration fantasy. and handling, Outpost can be on your motherboard in no time. Remember, with Outpost, you're in charge, and the fate of many lives rests in your hands. And that's a scary proposition when Josh is playing the game. Ooh, she throws down the gauntlet again. Ouch. See what happens when you get involved with Outpost? I've been programming computers for 20 years, and when I heard what Bruce and his team were trying to do with Outpost, I knew they had taken on a monumental task. They succeeded in spades. I really love this game, and I know you will too. Now coming up next, science fiction magic from Star Wars, and a very special musical treat. ago, we featured Steve Sansweet's book, Star Wars, From Concept to Screen to Collectible. It became one of our best sellers, and now we've got his newest book, and it sizzles. It's the price guide to worldwide Star Wars collectibles. This book about collectibles is itself a collectible, because we're offering a first edition copy signed by both of its authors, Steve Sansweet and T.N. Tumbush. Joining me now is our archivist, Jim Lotta, and he's going to tell us about this very special book and about how it can help collectors. Jim, you've been a collector for a long time, and I know you were excited to see this book. Why don't you tell us about what's well, in it? Well, every collector I know was, every Star Wars collector that I know was. Uh, this is something that Steve's been planning for years. It's uh, been over a year in development. Once they actually signed the deal to have it published, it took a year, actually, just to get all the rest of the information through. Steve wanted it to be the most comprehensive, and it is, collectible guide to Star Wars merchandise ever done, ever. There's 7,000 different types of products in here with 20 to 25,000 items listed. And How I mean, does Steve get all the information about this? He, he not only, it, well, he relied on his worldwide contacts. There's collectors all over the world that he worked with on this because what you run into is even Lucasfilm didn't know how many items they licensed. It had never been counted. So you have products that were made in, in every country. And in the book itself, it covers Australia, Finland, Japan. It's unlike anything that's ever been done. And Steve really deserves uh, kudos for this. It's just an incredible book. Now, this book has a lot of rare and unusual stuff, things that we haven't seen in a number of places. Um, what's some of the rarest stuff in here? Well, there's some things that we have from Steve's private collection, and here's one of my favorite pieces. This is a Kenner TIE Bomber uh, metal die-cast vehicle. Now, if, in the third part of the series, they were released in three different runs with the release of the different films. This was one of the last items to be released. Now, it retailed at $6.50 when it first came out. Guess what it's worth now? I hate to think. At $950. Now, it's listed in the book at up to $750, but I've seen them go for $950, and I've always now wanted how one they, myself. In fact, how do they estimate the price for things like this? That's what's so great about it. Steve was as honest as possible with his pricing in the book. What he did was he went, they went to 20 different dealers, and they had a consensus done. And they have a low ball price and a high ball price. And he tried to be very, very fair about it, and I think he really did an excellent job in his pricing. And uh, I think the collector is going to find it very valuable. And that's what's so great about it, because with the comprehensive listing, you're able to take a look at what your collection is worth. And if you're out there buying something on the market, you'll say, hey, wait a minute, and refer to this. So this is really the beginning. I'm sure this is going to continue. It's going to be updated periodically. But this is the first edition, first one, hot off the press. And the fans are just going crazy for it. You know, this is a reference book that we use on our show. And now it's your chance to own a copy of this wonderful guide. Here's how. 
Today, collecting Star Wars memorabilia has become one of the hottest hobbies around. And now for just $24.95, a signed copy of the definitive book about Star Wars collectibles can be yours. Just call... The Price Guide to Worldwide Star Wars Collectibles. This book is a visually exciting pictorial value guide, the only one sanctioned by Lucasfilm. This price guide was compiled after a thorough search through the famous Lucas Library, Toy Bay. I'd have paid them for that job. But the search is over and now you can join in on the fun for $24.95. This fabulous reference guide has over 7,000 collectibles pictured, covering over 20,000 items, and it includes current value estimates and a list of all licensees from 1977 through 1993. Collectibles from not only this country, but from all over the world. The manufacturer's list in the back of this book is the most complete and extensive ever compiled. And best of all, authors T.N. Tumbush and Steve Sansui will be signing every copy ordered. So call Plus shipping and handling, you can have your own signed copy of Price Guide to Worldwide Star Wars Collectibles. You know, this week we got a terrific letter from one of our fans, Roy Plummer from Maryland. He dropped us a line so that he could share his Lost in Space collection with us. Well, now we're going to share it with you. He's been collecting the show's memorabilia for the past 15 years, and included in his collection is this helmet, and the original robot toy, and a Greek version of the Lost in Space board game that he believes is the only one still in existence. Roy, we're going to send you this Sci-Fi Channel shirt for sharing your collection with us. And if any of you would like the great Sci-Fi Channel merchandise we feature on the show, yeah, just call us. Coming up next, we have a very special musical treat. The legendary composer Gerald Freed, who created some of the most memorable Star Trek music ever. He'll be performing it right here on The Trader. Next guest is Gerald Freed, the man who composed some of the most memorable music from the Star Trek series. Music for such classic episodes as A Mock Time, Shore Leave, and The Paradise Syndrome. We have a special signed box set of three CDs featuring Gerald's music. And now, accompanied by Rick Rittenberg on the keyboard, we have a special Star Trek medley featuring the legendary music of Gerald Freed.
Ah, uh, Gerald, Rick, that was wonderful. You know, listening to your music just now, you had my heart back on the bridge of the Enterprise, had me back with the landing parties. It was splendid. Thank you. Gerald, you've been writing music for TV for quite some time, you've worked on a lot of different shows. What was special about working on Star Trek? I guess it was a sense of mission. It just wasn't an ordinary TV series. Uh, they were making comments. It was supposed to be about out of space, you think, but it was really about us people down here. Like, for example, surely, you know, what really goes on our heads? What are our secret fantasies? Uh, the Star Trek series gave us a chance to, you know, explore things like that. We had to explore our fantasies and learn more about ourselves. Learn more about us. Yep. That was splendid. It was wonderful having you here. And here's Josh to tell you how you can get your very own box set of three CDs with the wonderful music from Gerald Freed. Fans of Star Trek know that its music is beautiful. We've got a special box set signed by composer Gerald Freed of three Star Trek CDs that will let you experience this music to its fullest. These CDs can be yours for just $39.95 by calling from the original masters to bring out the best sound available. This signed slipcase set has music from such classic Star Trek episodes as A Mock Time, The Doomsday Machine, and Shore Leave. Included in this Sci-Fi Trader exclusive package is the classic Star Trek main title theme and music from the pilot episode, Where No Man Has Gone Before, both by Alexander Courage. You get all of this wonderful music and these great liner notes, including these exciting pictures and vital episode information. For just $39.95 plus shipping and handling, you get this box set of three CDs signed by the composer, Gerald Freed. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Drew Struessen on our show and featured his newest work, the 10th anniversary commemorative poster of Star Wars Return of the Jedi, featuring the original artwork created for the recalled Revenge of the Jedi advanced poster. This poster is a limited gold foil edition and the coup de grace was not only getting Drew's signature but that of the Dark Lord of the Sith himself, David Darth Vader Prowse, a sci-fi trader exclusive. Well, you know the old expression, the phone ring off the hook? Well, our phones not only rang off the hook, they caused a busy signal from here to Tatooine. So many of you wanted this fabulous poster that had overloaded our phone system. Kudos to our viewers who alerted us to the situation. And now we're giving all those who tried to reach us a second and final chance to own one of these exciting signed gold foil prints. They're $79.95. There are very few of these limited editions left, and you can only get it here by going If you'd like any of the products that we had on the show today, they're only a phone call away. And remember, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Here's a review of what we featured on today's show. Outpost, the CD-ROM for the PC featuring Blow Mind state-of-the-art graphics. For just $59.95, the space exploration fantasy game can be yours. Remember, the legacy of Earth depends on your survival. We also have this comprehensive guide to all of the fabulous Star Wars memorabilia created to date. The price guide to worldwide Star Wars collectibles is a collectible in its own right because it's a first edition signed by both authors, Tian Tumbush and Steve Sansweet. Add this helpful and entertaining book to your library for only $24.95 and you won't regret it. And don't forget our rare treat for your ears, the classic Star Trek CDs from the original masters. This slipcase set is signed by composer Gerald Freed and features such classic episodes as The Naked Time and Shore Leave. Enjoy these great CDs for the very reasonable price of $39.95. For your convenience, we accept all major credit cards, personal checks, and money orders. Now Warren will cattle prod your consciousness with one last kernel of karmic concern. You know, I love thinking about our relationship with the universe. Apollo 11 astronaut Mike Collins had these thoughts about our cosmic playground. Man has always gone where he has been able to go. It's that simple. He'll continue pushing back his frontier, no matter how far it may carry him from his homeland. I'm Warren James, and this is the Sci-Fi Trader. Till next time, keep pushing back your own frontiers. And here's Gerald Freed to accompany you on your way.
Life After Apollo, Spacewalker Ed White, artist Paul Hudson, and much more on the next Inside Space tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern. Now stay tuned for amazing stories next on the Sci-Fi Channel.